we all know that nowadays the questions have become more and more clinical the questions are being asked in a way as you are sitting in the hospital and seeing a patient or managing a patient so going by this we are bringing this unique series integrated universe where we will not be discussing a subject rather we will be discussing a disease a topic in a simplified way so that if you see a patient related to this disease you will be able to manage it and if a question related to this disease is asked in the exam you will be able to answer it so continuing with it today we have um, we will be discussing a question with you uh, we will be discussing that topic with you and then we will be discussing that what is the best possible answer so um, uh, before i start i want to welcome dr praveen kumar the best faculty of pathology uh, in the in the entire india for pg entrance exam who will be uh, associating or who will be helping me in this integrated universe so dr praveen welcome thank you sir and welcome to all my dear friends and students i'm sure that by the end of this this lecture and this topic you will really fall love in the topic that you're going to discuss sir so please start so without wasting much of our time let us see so let me share a question with you over here i hope all of you can see the screen a 45 year old male presented to the medicine opd with complaint of fatigue rectal bleeding tenesmus and occasional crampy abdominal pain he says he has urgency with a feeling of incomplete evacuation physical sign of proctitis include a tender anal canal and blood on rectal examination barium study finding in the patient is given below now let us see a barium image given in this patient which of the following is true about the expected disease small bowel is more frequently involved in the disease 70% of the patient of this disease will have associated primary sclerosing cholangitis the earliest finding in this disease on double contrast barium anemia is mucosal granularity or focal ulcerated areas get deeper into muscularis layer to form cobblestone appearance so now please try to understand what is the question all about the question has given you a clinical information a radiological information and on the basis of that you have to make a diagnosis and using that diagnosis you have to pick up the correct answer from these four choices so before going on to the answer of this though you can write down the answer into the comment section but before going on to the answer let us discuss this very very important topic inflammatory bowel disease in a simplified manner so dr praveen over to you yes that's a that's a good question sir because we have the pathological aspect as well as medical aspect here so sir, this is a very interesting question where we have both a pathological question as well as a medical question including a radiological aspect you know what is inflammatory bowel disease it's something about a hyperimmune response you might have seen that when you eat some food that is not very very hygienic we tend to still not have any disease but suppose a person who has come from outside india and he has has been have very have you know uh, healthy and good sanitary food now he have a food which is not very very uh, clean i'll say what may happen sometimes is when he takes those unhygienic food the body immune response takes a hyperimmune immunity the abcs of the uh, intestine they present the cells to every of the uh, b cells the macrophage and the lymphocytes and every of these immune cells they start to attack the mucosal surface and that is when the hyper inflammatory response occurs what is called as inflammatory bowel disease now here what i'm showing you is two types of disease now please look at this image carefully one of them is ulcerative and one of them is crohn's why does it happen to understand this let's understand the basis of the disease here Now, before I move to the gross pathology, I'll just try to start from here. So, what happens is, see, in the this disease is showing you actually a Crohn's disease. Now, why does Crohn's? Because I want you first of all to look at. So, well, this is the first ulcer. Okay, in Crohn's, the first ulcer is a aphthous ulcer. Aphthous is a very small ulcer occurring as a first region in Crohn's. Now, when this multiple ulcers join together, this becomes what is called as serpentine ulcer. It's like a long snake. Now, what is ulcer? Something which goes down into the mucosal surface. Now, because this entire layer has gone down. now this entire layer has gone down so the area between this area which are written as normal interspersed normal mucosa this bulges up this bulging up produces what is called as a cobblestoning appearance gradually because remember in crohn's two things are very important number one it's a transmural that is full thickness involvement and secondly it's a segmental involvement so what happens 
if you talk about transmembrane involvement, what starts as an ulcer, that means very small, superficial, it goes deeper to form a fissure, it then forms a fistula, and ultimately the entire thing perforates. Now, when this perforates, the in fats here, they just tend to creep out from this area and what is called as creeping fat. So these all findings you expect were in a Crohn's disease. Remember one thing, the hallmark of the microscopy in Crohn's is actually what? It is called as a non caseating granuloma. Now this non caseating granuloma can be seen in any layer of the intestine, number one. And secondly, cryptitis, cryptapsis, and all those findings can surely be seen in Crohn's as a ulcerative. Now let me show you some other images to understand this better. See. What happens in ulcerative is it starts from the rectum. Now it's very confusing, sir. What and how to remember this? See, C and R, sorry, C and U, Crohn's and ulcerative. So C is Crohn's and U is ulcerative. Remember? So because U comes after C, remember, ulcerative is a distal involvement and Crohn's is a proximal involvement. So ulcerative, it starts from where? It always starts from the layer, which is rectum as cement colon, and gradually it starts spreading backward. Now, because it completely involves the colon here, it is called as pancolitis. Now, after involving the colon, it then goes where? It goes more backward into the terminal ileum. Though even though it's a rare involvement, but because this involvement starts from backward direction involving the terminal ileum, it is called as backwash ileitis. Now, would you expect this finding in Crohn's? No, because the finding in Crohn's is most commonly involved in the terminal ileum. So backwash ileitis is more commonly involved in the ulcerative colitis. Now, looking at this in the gross morphological view, so what happens here is, if you now look at this gross morphology, in Crohn's we saw an after ulcer, here what you see is broad based ulcers here. And those ulcers will join together to form continuous involvement, which is called as a continuous involvement. And secondly, it is important is, it only shows a superficial involvement, never goes deeper. That means if the mu muscle layer and cerebral layer is spared, think about ulcerative, do not think of Crohn's. Secondly, because it is only superficial, it will only show mucosal involvement, will not show fissure, fistula, perforation, surely will not show any strictures. This will be very important because any superficial involvement throughout the intestine should be thought about to be ulcerative, especially if it involves the rectum and the sigmoid colon. Now, when this mucosal surface gradually uh, breaches the entire area, what happens is some of the mucosal surface will start growing up. And that is what is actually seen as what is called as a pseudo polyp. I want you to look at few other images to understand this better. Now look at these two images. What you see in the first image here is these all are cobbled swimming aprons because they look like the stones in the park you often see. But this all are the pseudo polyp is you see these actually are what? The regenerating mucosa. So this is a cobbled stoning seen in Crohn's and this is what is called as pseudo polyp seen most in ulcerative. But can pseudo polyp be seen in Crohn's? Yes, it can be. If it is a segmented pseudo polyp, it can be seen in Crohn's again. A few other things you should also understand here, like if you see involvement of the inflammatory cells inside the crypts, now see this is a normal crypt, okay? Now if the involvement is inside the crypt here, it is called as cryptapsis, but if it involves the walls here, it is called as cryptitis. Now you see this very beautiful image, this is showing you what it actually is an image of cryptitis, and you see this inside area is called as cryptapsis, but the involvement in the crypt here, it will be called as again a cryptitis. So you all know the macroscopic findings, you know the microscopic finding, and I just said your golden rule. If you see sparing of the mucosal surface, sorry, if you see the sparing of the muscle area and cerebral area, always think of our ulcerative, do not go towards the Crohn's. And this will be told very much importantly in the radiological finding that will be told by Dr. Dutt, sir. Okay, microscopically, this shows what is called as just a non casting granuloma. The moment you see a non casting granuloma here with a Langhan cells or something like a uh, you know giant cell, it surely goes for the favor of Crohn's disease. I'll come back to you after you understand some radiological finding by Dr. Rajat Jain. Sir, over back to you. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. I, it reminds me of my own pathology days when I have read about inflammatory bubble disease and ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Okay, guys, so, so the whole idea, if you're going to look at it, is that this is how the pathophysiology of the inflammatory bowel diseases is coming. As you're looking at the questions nowadays, whenever there are two diseases that are going together and there are some differences between the diseases, this is something that is very, very frequently asked now.